Hey everyone, welcome to another Lightroom editing tutorial. In this video, we are going from this raw file to this dark, gloomy waterfall shot. So, if you want to follow along, make sure to click the link in the description of the video to download the raw file. And now, let's jump right into it. So, this will be our base image to work with. And most of the editing for this shot is actually done in the basic tab and with some masking. So let's go right ahead and expand that basic panel. To start this, I'm changing the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard, which will just slightly lessen the contrast, which in turn means we do have a bit more control over the contrast ourselves. Let's work on the white balance. Looking at this image, you can pretty clearly see this image has a slight blue color cast. That's especially visible right there in the water, which really shouldn't be that blue. How do we change that? Simply by adjusting the temperature slider. So let's raise it and thus reduce the overall blue tones of the image. I think I will raise it quite a lot. And at the same time, I do have a feeling there's a bit too much purple in this shot as well. To fix that, I'm going to bring down the tint slider. With those two adjustments, we do have a pretty natural looking image. At this point, we can start working on the exposure. Looking at this program, you can see it's pretty dark, but we can pretty much fix all of that under exposure and still have all the details in the highlights that we need. First off, let me just raise the exposure, making this shot slightly brighter. I still want to keep it rather dark as I want to create a gloomy waterfall image, but of course don't want to have it too dark. Also, I'm going to increase the blacks trying to fix the worst of the underexposure in this image. I can also hold down the Alt key while I drag along this black slider to see where the underexposure is actually happening. You can see it's right there in a very tiny area. So at that point, we don't really have to worry about that underexposed area. We can further brighten up the darks by bringing up the shadows. Just want to raise it very, very slightly. And then let's also work on the highlights. I think I will raise the whites since we have a bit room left on the brightest areas. And this will make the white water of the waterfall pop and just add some overall contrast, which looks pretty good. So that's it for the tone adjustments. Compared to before, looks much better, especially the colors. The sky does look a bit blown out, but we will change that with a bit of masking. For now, let's add a bit of clarity and I'm also going to drop the vibrance which in my opinion works great with those gloomy dark images. Alright, so at this point we are done adjusting the basic stuff then I do want to apply some masking, bringing out more details and just making the shot more dramatic. The masking adjustments might be way over the top for some people, but I think it looks really great with those waterfalls. So let me start by using a radial gradient and with this one I do want to add some kind of glow effect. So I'm going to create a smaller radial filter like that. And just place it somewhere on top of the waterfall overlapping the cliffs. In here I'm going to bring up the blacks which will make it appear to be glowing in this area. And I can further work on that effect by bringing down the dehaze. Keep in mind, this will also add brightness. So you can see, looking at this program, overexposure kicking in really fast. But I think it just looks great, so I don't worry about that overexposed area. Maybe adjust the size and the position a bit, but that looks great. At the same time, I do want to create a sky selection. And for that mask, I do want to subtract a radial gradient just over that bright spot above the waterfall. Maybe like this. And what I want to do with that sky selection is to make the top part darker with a little more detail in the clouds. So I'm going to go ahead and bring down the exposure. Let's drop it a lot. All right, that looks great. I'm also going to drop the temperature and the saturation. I 
think I might want to increase the radial filter I'm subtracting from that sky mask to get a more natural fade. Okay, wonderful. Let's enchant the glow some more. Again, I'm simply using a radial gradient, but I'm just creating a very small one like this right on top of the waterfall, maybe rotate it a bit to fit the shape of that cliff. Again, I'm just working with increased blacks and decreased dehaze. All right, I love how this looks. But let's not forget the foreground. For the foreground, I think I want to use another radial gradient, but a rather big one to get all the white water in there and a little bit of that landscape as well. In here, I'm going to bring up the clarity to add more detail. And I'm also adding texture for a sharper look. Perfect. At this point, we could also work on the waterfall in the back itself. So let's use another radial gradient to target the shape of the waterfall. And I do want to add a little more detail in here. So again, I'm just making use of the clarity slider, which works really, really good here. You can see this will also make the waterfall brighter and in turn just add some more contrast. Just be careful to not overexpose too much, but this looks pretty solid so far. All right, nice. At this point, I have a feeling the left side is a little distracting because it's a bit too bright and I want the viewer to look right there in the center going from the white water in the foreground all the way to the waterfall in the back. So I'm going to use the linear gradient covering most of the left side like this and I'm just going to raise the contrast which will just make the area slightly darker and thus we just get some more attention towards the center of the image. Finally, I want to add one more thing using a mask and that is some artificial waterfall spray coming up from the bottom of the waterfall. And here, once more, I'm going to use a radial gradient. I'm going to make it really, really thin and white, just like that. And to add this water spray, I'm going to drop the dehaze again, just like for the glow effect. And I can also bring up the blacks. I think that's a bit too much of the dehaze, so let's reduce it a notch. Also, I might change the position, going more towards the left side here. All right, that looks wonderful. So here we have the image after the masking adjustments. As you can see, the masking for this image is really, really important. Here we have the basic version and here with all the masks applied. So next up, we want to do just a little bit of color grading. And for that, we are going to head into the color grading tab. Here, I do want to work on the shadows and only the shadows by just giving them a cold hue, some in the blue range. And let's raise the saturation so the color becomes visible. Just want to have a subtle blue color cast in those shadows and that's why I'm not overdoing it with the saturation, but that looks great. And then we can also head down into the calibration tab. You can see I forgot to reset those settings, but what I did here is to simply bring down the hue and raise the saturation slightly, just making this image a little more vibrant as you can see when I turn this slider off. So we're almost done. Just one more thing to do, which is the sharpening in the details tab. And as always, I'm just using the same settings by bringing down the radius, increasing the details, add some masking, and I'm holding down the Alt key again to adjust the slider. So I can actually see where the image will be sharpened. And then I'm raising the amount of sharpening. And that's it. Here we have the finished waterfall image. I hope this Lightroom tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.